When I started to learn VR, I had no idea we could get sick with it. So I made this application where the player could fly above some forest, which I believe was amazing to do in VR. The game was laggy, the player could move fast and I was comfortable using it. But once I let someone else play the game, that person got eventually so sick that she had to leave the room and has probably never wanted to try VR ever since. Three years later, I'm here to prevent you to do the same mistake that I made because I'm going to share with you the 7 tips I learned to make a motion sickness free application. So without further ado, let's get started. What is motion sickness exactly? There are two main components responsible for self-motion, the vestibular system and the visual perception. The vestibular system uses the liquid in our inner ears to give information to the visual perception about the movement and orientation of the head. So do the test at home, close your eyes and move your head around, you will see that you will still know in which way your head is moving. As you can see, there is a complex relationship between the two and when the connection is disrupted, this is what can cause symptoms like nausea, vomits, or headache. And scientists are still trying to understand where these symptoms are coming from. But the main theory is sensory conflict. The sensory conflict theory says that when your vestibular system gets a conflicted information with your eyes, the body does not know how to handle it. And in VR, this is exactly what we have. The headset tells our eyes that we are moving, but our body stays still. And now let's see what we can do about it as developer with tip number one, optimize your game. All VR headsets come with a specific refresh rate, which is the number of times the headset screen is updated per second. Optimizing your game has for goal to always target this value. If you don't, the game is subject to lag, creates a delay between your head movement and the screen, thus a conflict of information and motion sickness. So there is a lot of things to do to optimize a game and this would require a complete video. So if you guys want me to, to make a video about this subject, let me know in the comment section below. But if you want to get the frame per second of your game, just go in the game windows on Unity and click here on the stat windows, which will give you some information about your FPS, but also about the number of triangles and batches that are currently being used. Also, if you want to show it in the headset and not on the inspector, you can simply create a canvas, add a text, set it to world, scale it down and put it in front of the eye camera and use this script to the text which you will find in the description below. Oh and remember that to get the real frame per second, you need to maximize your game windows. And there you go, you will now have your FPS displayed in front of your eyes. If you want to make the player move and this is not the player's intention, he will not be able to prepare for the conflict of information that he will get. So you have to avoid unwanted movement. This can be applied for example with stairs. Here I have the stair in my game which I want my player to use. But as you can see with the mesh collider, when we get up the stairs, the player feels every bump. And this is that kind of unwanted movement that I'm talking about. So instead of using a mesh collider, create a plane rotate it to match the slope of your stairs and there you have it, you will be able to use it without feeling the bumps causing motion sickness. And the same goes for a lot of things. For example, don't make your player fall or don't make an enemy push your player. Don't use a moving platform or jumping. And I know these are some common things to do in 3D platformer, but in VR it's just not that preferable. While we are at it with unwanted movement, Let's talk about what I believe is the most important factor for motion sickness, the locomotion. So in VR we have for a long time used two main types of locomotion system, teleportation and touchpad movement. These two types of locomotion system are both easily controllable for any user, preventing unwanted movement. So my advice would be to use them. But let's say that your game doesn't fit these two types of locomotion. Two rules apply then. First, you have to make your locomotion controllable and two, you have to make it smooth. So no tilt of camera or no acceleration. And if you tell me that your player needs to move fast, I have one more trick up my sleeve for you. Reduce the field of view. That's right, it has been proven that the peripheral part of our vision is more apt to motion sickness. So you might want to do like in Google Earth or Eagle Flight to create a visual tunnel when the player moves fast. And if you want to implement this in your game, I strongly recommend this great asset that is now free on the asset store. 
Tunneling Pro. Tunneling Pro will let you create a sort of vignette around the player vision when he moves too fast and you can get even more creative to reduce the field of view. For example, if you want to control a spaceship, cover the side of the cockpit so that the movement will only be perceived on a small part of the vision. Or like in the Slenderman replica that I did on my channel, you see here the flashlight only shows a restricted part of the field of view that helps the player to not get sick while moving. And finally, my last advice on locomotion is to find yourself what fits the most the game. There are a lot of other locomotion systems that exist to climb, run and even fly. Test them and see which one make more sense. And for the more wealthy amongst you, you have an additional option which are motion platform such as VR treadmill which helps to recover a physical motion from the motion you feel in VR. Okay, so my next tip is to make the player feel the depth of your game. When you design your scene, it is good to have some elements that separate the object from the background, or even to add some point of interest like a big mountain or a tower for example. This is something we don't acknowledge but that our brain will take into account. And when moving around the scene, the depth that you create in your scene will help the player to evaluate its speed and rotation. And with your point of interest, this will give him clues to where he is situated so that he doesn't get lost. But while we are talking object placement, don't place too many objects close when the player is moving fast. Because the farther you are, the faster close object appears, which can increase the feeling of movement perceived and the information your visual perception gets. On the same subject, it means that you have to reduce the element that disrupt the perception of depth. For example, text. Don't put them in front of the eyes like a 3D game. A better use of text is to put it in world space and to make them part of your world. You can even force the text to fit the player to improve readability. And if you really need the text to follow the player's vision, at least make it move with a smoothness like I did here so that it doesn't stick to the vision. For the next tip, let's talk about visual effect. It has been proven that flicker light can cause eye fatigue are distracting and increase the field of view. So don't overuse this technique. For example, don't go out on the muzzle flash when shooting with a gun or on the broken neon in a horror game or even here on the bloom. And the same goes for other effects that can deteriorate the vision such as blur or screen shake. Imagine having this in VR, this would be horrible and it give me motion sickness just by looking at this video. But if you imperatively want screen shake in your VR game, there is a solution proposed by Zulebo's prediction. I quote, instead of shaking the whole view by moving the camera, I use a post effect to be able to have more control over the shaking. I only shake the margin of the screen to let your peripheral vision pick up on it without obscuring whatever you are focusing on. Therefore, this technique consists on not moving the center of view, but instead to change the field of vision on the edge of the screen, which makes a really nice screen shake effect without motion sickness. And you will also find a download link for the source code of this screen shake effect on the description below. My next tip is to support short play. This one seems obvious but is also often discarded. The longer the play session is, the more the player is subject to eye exhaustion and motion sickness. So you have to design your game in that manner. Either cut your game in several parts or make your player be able to save at all time or even pause the game when the player removes the headset. Here is how you can make it in Unity. First, create a new script, add a private boolean variable uh, is present last frame, which will be true if the player had his headset in the previous frame. And in the update function, you can check if the headset is on with unity engine.xr.xr device.user presents equals unity engine.xr.user present state dot present. And now what is left to do is to check if the user had the headset last frame and that it doesn't have it now and do the contrary to know if he put the headset on. Also, don't forget to update the isPrison last frame variable at the end of the function. And there you go, now you can do whatever you want when the player is putting the headset or removing it. In my case, I made a text appear when the headset is removed and push the game by setting time.timescale to zero. And when the player put his headset back, it will resume after 3 seconds. And for the last tip, let your player decide. We could do everything possible to make our VR game comfortable 
and still people will get sick in it. There are just so many factors that have the responsibility of the player and not the developer. But what we can do as developer is to make the player choose. For example, let him select if he prefers to have teleportation or touchpad movement like in Rec Room. Make him choose if he wants to have a comfortable or an immersive experience. And if you believe your game can make some people sick, maybe just tell them to stay hydrated or to be prepared. But be careful that sometimes just telling someone that they might got sick can increase their chance of actually getting sick. And that's all for me. These were my 7 tips to make a motion sickness free application. So I try to mix both practical information and theory. I don't know how it felt, but. Uh, if you like this type of content, let me know in the comment section below. Also, I've put into one single project all of the tips that I've shown in this video. This will be available also on my Patreon. Anyway, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.